had a really good reading month this month. My brows are a bit, they're not done. My nails aren't done. I'm a bridesmaid next week, which I'm gonna try and vlog. So, so I feel like there's heavy topics in every book. So you should always check trigger warnings. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I read a lot of books. I read 100 books last year in 2022. This year though, my reading goal is actually 20. And that's because I feel like I wanna focus on quality and not quantity. I wanna read fantasy books and fantasy books are usually quite big. And I want to get into adult fantasy as well. Like By the end of the year, I want to be a Brandon Sanderson kind of girl. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like I want to upgrade. So this is my April book set. Um, I read... I should have planned this before, shouldn't I? I read two romances. One, two, three, four. I read four fantasies, two romances, and one literary fiction. So I'm going to start with the one literary fiction. The main character has married into a polygamous marriage. She's the fourth wife. The other three wives, well, two of them are very evil. One of them's like, in school when they're like, um, if you stand by and watch bullying, you're just as bad as the bullies. It, it's that kind of vibe. So she's that kind of person that just stands by and kind of doesn't do anything. To be fair to her though, they do like threaten her and stuff. So I understand. But what did I think of this book? At first, I was not enjoying it because I was buddy reading it with my friend. Basically, I got a new O2 contract and O2 actually gives you two thingies, two thingies for free. So I got um, Disney Plus and Audible. But Disney Plus, I've only got it for six months and Audible, they gave it to me for three months. I used my first reading credit to finish this book and I literally loved the audiobook. I think Lola herself is the narrator and it feels like a friend is telling you a story. What I love with Audible is that you can change the speed. This is not an ad guys. This is not, it's about to be a Netflix um, TV show. I can't wait to see what Netflix is going to do with it. Their adaptation of Bridgerton is so good. They do a really good job of it and I hope they do a good job of the secret lives of Bavisegi's wives. I'm just wondering if it's going to be a series or a movie. I think it should be a series but a limited series. Netflix, if you're watching this, it needs to be a limited series because I think a movie is a bit too short to show like all the little elements but long series like what are you going to do for season two do you know what I mean so limited series is a really good idea short sweet simple listen to me Netflix because I am right and you are wrong the wives are like all plotting to get rid of our main character and their plots are just so their plans are just the worst plans the worst evil villain has to be Aya Segi, the worst evil villain in the world. Like, her plans are never really thought out and she keeps getting caught. One of the interesting themes is like motherhood, when you're not able to conceive and the value of women in society. I really thought that theme was really cool and I can't wait to see what Netflix does. Please do check trigger warnings because there are some very intense scenes there are parts of the story that are really sad and for all of the books i'm going to talk about please check the trigger warnings my second read was the love wager by lynn painter i really like lynn painter's writings i feel like she writes rom-coms you can imagine this as a movie it's about Haley and what's the boy's name again Haley and jack so Haley and jack um are friends at first how did they meet though Oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, they met um, at his sister's wedding. Things happened and then they reconnect later on, basically. I don't want to spoil anything. The book is about them being friends, but they're trying to wingman each other on dates. Most rom-coms are not laugh out loud hilarious. They are just like, haha, in your head hilarious. So I feel like Painter does a good job of writing them. I think she should, she should write more adult romance book because i really liked mr wrong number as well it was so cute i really like book characters who are like a disaster so mr wrong number was like so good because she was such a disaster next read was six of crows it's about these six like misfits criminals and they have to plan a heist to steal something i'm not going to say what it is because that's kind of a spoiler when they do steal what the person's asking for they're going to get like a lot of money to set them up for life. They've all got reasons why they want the money. 
and it's on TV as well, which I was, I don't know if I was feeling the TV series, like, I don't know if I was feeling it, I'm not gonna lie, guys. But um, the Six of Crows book was actually well written. Lee Bardugo is a good writer. I've heard so many good things about her other book, Ninth House. I've got the book and I've got Audible credits, but my next time I can use it is next month. So I might use my Audible credit to listen to Ninth House. Mysterious Society of Lady Scoundrels. So imagine like Bridgerton and then Peaky Blinders come together and make a baby. That's what people describe it as. Also just bizarre but fun kind of bizarre. I love like goofy quirky stuff. Like, then I reread Once Upon a Broken Heart. Once Upon a Broken Heart was a reread so um, I already know kind of what I expected from it and I'm gonna keep it as a five star read obviously. It's one of my favourite books. It's just a comfort kind of it reads like a fairy tale kind of i love jax's character i saw this girl on tiktok talk about the howl archetype um if you've watched howl's moving castle and you like his kind of character of like the dramatic like good looking i don't know people think he's good looking i don't know um but if you like the that kind of character like howl like, pick this up a lot of people don't like evangeline as a character um, they think she's quite annoying but i would say she is very naive but she acts her age i feel like because i think she is under 20. i'm sure she's under 20. i feel like she acts her age i don't know but read ravel by lissamia smith ravel did i i don't know if i rated okay dear sides of lady scoundrels i would give a four star six of crows i would give a five star the love wager i would give four stars and the secret lives of babasegi's wives i would give the audiobook four stars and the physical book 3.5 stars now i know you're thinking the content's the same though but i feel like the experience is what i'm basing my rating on so i saw a tiktoker called sloan talk about this book and i picked up because they mentioned that it gave them caraval vibes and i've been looking for caraval vibes for a long time this book is about um lux Ravel. lux Ravel is the star of her family show so this book is kind of inspired by moulin rouge i read somewhere so two main characters or point of views that we have is jameson and lux it's a fantasy kind of romance book the cover is kind of do you guys think that's cute? Because I can never tell when a cover is cute. It's about the people living on this island of Sharma um, in the time where alcohol was banned. I think it's called a prohibition. Um, Lux has to kind of help her family financially by doing something. I'm not going to say what. And this book, I couldn't tell you the plot. That's not a good thing, in it, that I can't tell you the plot. But it was a good book. I love the magic system. So there's like four families, there's three of them that I can like remember clearly. So the Ravels who can, can use jewels to kind of change your emotions and make you feel certain things. So people kind of pay for their service because they want to feel a certain way or they can like create fantasies using jewels. The Kronos family who can time travel, that part was so cool. Um, and then I forgot the name of the third family, but they are doctors who can say I injure myself. They can take my injury and give it to someone else, but that person has to agree. So it's kind of ethical because that person has to agree for the magic to work and they have to like willingly say, yeah, I'll take the injury for Fenty for it to work. After the new magic system, I've never heard of something like that, but then again, I've never read every book in the world. If there's a book like that out there somewhere, I'm sorry to that author, that I've said that it's original, but for now it's original, you know what I mean? Because I have never read anything like that. Um, I love the whole circus feel and I loved the family element of it. Lux's family is really important to her. She's got a really big family of like, I forgot the number, but I think it's 80 cousins or something. So I loved that kind of vibe because I come from a big family as well. Maybe not as many as her, or maybe I do have as many as her. 
but I come from a really big family as well so I loved that like element of all her cousins and all of them being so close and stuff like that but this book was like a roller coaster like I really enjoyed being on that ride why I can't give this book five stars is just because I was quite confused by the time traveling element of it especially at the end it could just be a me problem yeah I just got lost so the next book I want to talk about is Magnolia Parks it was a fun read. Was it a good example of a relationship? No. But was it interesting to read? Yes. In books and films, I love like mares. I'm looking for a book with like White Lotus vibes. I really enjoyed that TV show. I'm looking for a TV show actually with White Lotus vibes. I read some cool books this month. Let me know what you want to see. Thanks for watching guys.